View for Hamburger Hill, directed by John Irvin. So this is a movie I've heard of, you know, a lot, um, a lot, a lot about, but I've never seen. And um, I just watched it, and wow, <laughs> messed up movie, man. Basically stars Dylan McDermott, which is interesting because he does a lot of TV work. Um, but he's he's in some stuff. Olympus has fallen. He's in that movie with Clint Eastwood, where he's a Secret Service agent. Um, but anyways, Dylan McDermott is pretty much the star. And he gets some new recruits, and they're kind of babysitting this bridge. And there's a little bit of com there's some combat in the beginning, and throughout the middle. But the Hamburger Hill part's really at the at the last act, and it is brutal. And uh, the hill is also known as uh, Hill Nine Thirty Seven. And this is obviously in the Vietnam War. And Dylan McDermott is kind of... You get the hint that he's kind of anti-war. He's jaded. He doesn't really know what, like, what they're really doing. And there's another member in his group that's kind of, you know, more into the war. Uh, Steven Weber, or he's kind of like... You know, shut up with this uh, anti-war talk. Steven Weber's very good in this, too. So him and Steven Weber are pretty much the star. Um, and this is going to be full spoilers. Full spoilers. So, it's a very good war movie. I'm not sure how I'd rank it. I, I think I do like Platoon more. I think Platoon um, is a little more flashy, because it's Oliver Stone. The way it's directed. So I'd, I'd probably put Platoon above this. And um, Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket's a movie that I, I like. But I think the first half is like amazing. And the second half is just. It's, it's okay. But. This is a very brutal movie. Um. You know, I'm I'm pretty much an anti-war person myself. You know, I mean, World War Two. You know, it. You know, it's like I think most wars, the people that get screwed over are just, you know, the grunts, and the local people in in in, in the, in, um, that are standing in the way of the war. Like the Vietnamese people in this, and they're just you know at the end of this movie they're just assaulting this this hill, and so many people are dying, and for what, you know for I mean for what, and I you know I've heard a lot of Vietnam veterans say that they're just like I don't understand what we were doing there, we're in the middle of the jungle. There's bugs everywhere. We're sweating. We're it, you know. There's all these diseases you, that, that that you're getting, you're getting killed. You don't even see the enemy. You don't even know who the enemy is. And and I think this movie, you know, um, conveys that very well. So, but yeah, for me, it seems like m most of the wars, I I don't. I don't think help the average man or or help the troops, um, you know, except for World War Two. But anyways, that's a whole other thing. But I, I did enjoy this movie. It's got a great cast as a young Don Cheadle. Uh, Courtney Vance. So like a lot of actors you, you would see a lot more later, obviously, Stephen Weber, Dylan McDermott. And really, it's it all culminates in the end when they're trying to take the hill. 
and just so many people are dying. Guy gets an arm, his arm blown off. There's some great practical effects, you know, concerning that. Guy gets his arm blown off. And like I said, spoilers, it's like Steven Weber gets like the top of his head blown off. And he's just kind of walking around, dazed, bleeding everywhere, and then he just collapses and dies. Dylan McDermott, I think, gets stabbed in the back with by a by a bayonet. And it's just sad. So many young, you know, American lives uh killed. And then, you know, hundreds of thousands wounded. You know, these men will never be the same. And they were just starting to understand PTSD, you know, and and this isn't in the movie, really, but you could just imagine some of their lives afterwards and the things that they've seen. Um, if, it, if the war didn't break you physically, I think it broke you mentally. And it's just, you know, it, I mean, it's sad. And they're trying to take this hill, hill, I think it's 937. Yeah, Assault on Hill 937. This is Wikipedia. So, you know, t take that as you will, but which, so which soon grows into the Battle of Hamburger Hill when unexpectedly determined resistance is encountered with the NBA defending well entrenched positions. The platoon is forced to attack the hill repeatedly against stubborn opposition. Between assaults, U.S. airstrikes steadily strip away all vegetation, leaving the hill barren, scorched wasteland. Yeah, it's like this this hill is just barren. There's like it's just all dead. But you know, you gotta take that hill. You you, you gotta get the upper position so that you can get uh you know strategic dom dominance. Between assaults, US airstrikes steadily strip away all veg all, ve all vegetation. In one assault, a battle crazed wounded Duffy wielding an M60 machine gun. Scenes on the verge of carrying the day as enemy resistance begin to crumble. However, botched air support by helicopter gunfire gunships causes several friendly casualties. In between the attacks, the shrieking platoon tries to rest, chattering about social upheaval and unrest back home. Beinstock is devastated by a letter from his girlfriend whose college friends have told her that it is immoral to remain with a soldier. <laughs> yeah. He gets a cassette from his girlfriend, and Franz is moved that she mentions his name. Worcester describes Worcester describes to his com um, comrades the alienation and hostility from anti-war college students and the breakdown of his marriage. On his return to from a previous tour of duty, he tells a good friend whose son has been killed in Vietnam in 1965, Battle of La Drang, who receives cruel phone calls gloating over his son's death. Yeah, you know, it's really messed up how Vietnam veterans were were treated when, when they returned. I mean, you know, people threw stuff at them, called them names, you know, called them, you know, child killers. And not that atrocities weren't done in Vietnam, but really, you shouldn't be... Um, blaming the grunt you know for decisions that are way above their head they have no power they're just trying to survive and you know a lot of them joined you know for good reasons for patriotic reasons but um yeah in the end it's just like well, you know what are we doing over there you know taking this hill that no one remembers no no, no one cares about but so many men die for, you know, little little reason, really. Uh, the reception among Vietnam veterans was very positive towards the film's authenticity and brutality. A number of Vietnamese advisors served to ensure the authenticity of the Vietnamese people. John Irvin, in particular, made sure the film looked real. For the paratroopers, a U.S. Army famous 101st, known as the Screaming Eagles, due to their distinctive soldier patch, were feared and respected 
by their North Vietnamese and Viet Cong enemies in Vietnam, the Vietnamese communists called the 101st troops chicken men because of the eagle shoulder patches and had a cautious saying about them, beware the chicken men. Wow, during production, an electrician was electrocuted and died in front of the cast and crew. Production was almost shut down, but eventually continued after memorial service. The characters in this movie were named after men that writer James Karabatos had fought alongside. So this is based on a novel by James Karabatos. So U.S. military records of the battle refer to mountain to the mountain as Hill 937. Its map designation having been derived from the high elevation of the hill at 937 meters, 3,074 feet. The novelized version of the film, written by William Pelfrey, based on the screenplay by James Carabatos, features several additional scenes not featured in the final cut of the movie. John Irvin, the director, had filmed the documentary in Vietnam during the war. Based on true events that occurred in 1969 during the Vietnam War, some of the extras during filming were U.S. Marines stationed in the Subic Bay, Philippines area. The screenwriter had fought in the Vietnam War. One reason that producer Marcia Naster came on board is because her son had also fought in Vietnam. Wow, Dylan McDermott lost 25 pounds during production. It's kind of a different role that you see for him. Uh, I don't think I've seen him as a uh, veteran or a, a, as a, a soldier. Thousands of burning tires were used to blot out the sun. Wow, there were 372 American troops wounded and 72 killed. NVA dead were estimated at over 600. Yeah, I'm sure they have no idea, really. That's why it's called Hamburger Hill because it's you know the hamburger, is it's uh, it's it, it it's human. So just a brutal movie. I mean, especially the the last half is very memorable. You know, you get to see them uh, interact. The, the, you know, they kind of butt heads. There's racial tension. You know, there's um, there's different cliques. In 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 uh in, in you know in the movie, kind of like in Platoon actually. You know, in Oliver Stone, he was actually in Vietnam also, so. But yeah, this is a very a very solid movie. I I I would probably put Platoon o over it. Um, Born on the Fourth of July is very good, but pretty much that just is. He joins. He's in Vietnam. Soon after, he gets shot. He gets paralyzed. And it's kind of just his journey um, afterwards. And then he becomes like an anti-war activist. Uh, very good movie. Uh, great performance by Tom Cruise. But um, but yeah, for, for the director, I think it's very well directed. Uh, you know, like I said, great effects, you know, real explosions, n no CGI like you see today. That's the thing. It's like today, you know, I mean, a lot of even war movies, they just don't really make these kind of movies anymore. I mean, there were some about the Iraq war in Afghanistan. Um, what was one that I, that I watched, uh, I think it was called Covenant. Guy Ritchie movie. That's actually really good. That's a crazy story, too, but I'd recommend that. But even that has, you know, some CGI. This has none. So you can really feel, like, the fire and the intensity of what's going on in the movie. And for me, at least, that goes a long way. 
I mean, you know, you, you you could watch a bunch of modern blockbusters, and there's just usually some bad CGI, and it just kind of takes me out of the movie. But anyways, about the director, like I was saying, he did a raw deal with us with Arnold right before this. That's a movie I could never really get into. It's kind of a forgotten Arnold movie. I don't know, maybe I should give it another shot, but I I remember watching it a while ago, and I just wasn't into it. So, so yeah, this is a director I haven't really seen a lot of his stuff. His, he did a, sh a short, his first movie, Gala Day, 1963. Um, Next of Kin. Okay, I've heard of that. That's with Patrick Swayze. Did a Robin Hood movie. The Boys in the, and Girl from County, uh, from County Clare. So, yeah, I haven't seen almost any of this guy's other work. Except for Raw Deal, which I wasn't a big fan of. But, uh, he's a British director, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, the second half is brutal. It's kind of nice to see some of uh, their interactions when they're, like, in a local Vietnamese town. And they're interacting with the locals. They're, they're get you know, they're getting drunk. They're, um, going to the brothel house. You know, just like in many Vietnamese movies, you, you know, often see them going to the brothel house, interacting with the local women. So, I I, I like that, the uh, interactions between the soldiers. But pretty much at the end, I think only three of them survive. Yeah. So the 11th and final assault is mounted by the remaining troops, whose bitterness and exhaustion is overcome by desperation and unit pride. The final enemy positions are overrun, but the cost is heavy. Lieutenant Eden loses his right arm. Yeah, that that was brutal. He's, like, trying to call in more air support. And um, Dylan McDermott walks up to him. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And the guy's arm is just blown off. He doesn't even realize it. I think his radio's broken. He's trying to call in air support. Uh, Dylan McDermott, I think, gives him some morphine. And then later, um, I'm not sure if he, if he survived, but, because uh, then they finally take the hill, and they get reinforcements, and then some of them start to, you know, clean up uh, with medics, some of the people that are still alive. Lieutenant Eden loses his right arm, while Murphy, Worcester, Motown, Beinstock, and Lang Languilly... Which is funny because everyone called him Alphabet, and 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 in one scene he he fights. Uh, is it, does he fight Motown? Because they keep calling him Alphabet, and he's like he's like I forget his first name, but he's like my name is Linguini or Languilly. <laughs> Even I can't can't say it properly. Yeah, Anthony Borelli, Private. Vincent Alphabet Lang Languilly, and he hated when people called him Alphabet. Languilly or killed, Fran stunned by the loss of so many friends, is dazed and wounded by an enemy bayonet. Yeah, right in the back, too. It's like, oh man, you could feel it. Like, you could definitely feel some of the uh, impacts in this, I felt. Beletsky, also wounded but enraged, leads the final push to the summit. I mean, you just gotta give it to these guys. Like, they just keep going up the hill trying to take it. I mean, I'd probably be running in the other direction. Beletsky, also wounded by, but enraged, leads the final push to the summit. At the summit, the bleeding and exhausted Franz, Washburn, and Beletsky sit together in the dirt as the battlefield finally goes silent. Yeah. I like how the movie opens on the uh, memorial, the Viet Vietnam Memorial, which if you've never seen is a site because it just has all the names of of, uh, of the killed. 
So, but yeah, that's about all I have to say. I mean, it, it's sad. Um, it's kind of a you know, I think a war that really we shouldn't have been there fighting. I think that's widely accepted now, but it's controversial at the time. Well, I mean, in the 60s and 70s, but so. But yeah, Hamburger Hill, 1987, uh, directed by John Irvin. And uh, yeah, check it out. It's a really good war movie, I think. So, but uh, if you could do me a favor and uh, smash that like button, that'd be great. Really helps the channel. And I'll uh, see you next time.